So let's recap quickly. We go to the shaft. We don't freak out. We replace the bearings with pin loads. I mean, uh, simply supported beams. We look at the load. We simplify the geometry quite a lot. We eliminate all the steps and this, that, and the other, which are not essentially all that critical. And then we go, and then we redraw it only like a line diagram. Now look, there is not even the the gears here, and not even any steps. It's just a bar with forces. Okay, that's how much we simplify. Then we look at side view, plan view, end view. So the fundamental question that comes about torque is the easiest one to handle. We will not worry about that too much. You will see that torque is very easy. It's just force times radius and you can figure out how much torque is being applied to the shaft. And typically almost all the bearings and gears and things like that, the torque is constant. We will very rarely have cyclic torque. Most of the time it's constant torque. So it actually does not go into into the it it does not really matter to us as much as the bending moment, which is what cycles because it's a rotating shaft with a constant constant force. So the bending moment will go from tension the the, the outer fibers will go from tension to compression. Okay, so we are really interested in the bending moments. We want to make sure we know how to do it. So that's item number one. So now let's look at the bending moments. Okay, so first thing. So let's make sure example one simply supported beam with one concentrated force. So we need to know how to solve this. If you know how to solve this you can find the forces and solve for any beam okay which is simply supported so let's look at this example so that we make sure we know how to do it so here is the beam okay here is the force so let's go to a different color for this force that's the applied force let's pick some numbers f equals um, let us say 3 kilo newtons okay and then we have reaction forces or 1 or 2 notice i have drawn the reaction forces in red and the and the applied force in blue so the question is what are these Then here we are going to say okay this distance is A okay so let us say this is equal to 30 mm and this distance is B. Okay, so total length is L that's 100 mm. Okay, so you want to find R1 and R2. So, some basic things uh, one, the reaction load. Nearer the Sorry, so let me write let me write the word nearer correct. Nearer the applied load is higher. So that means in this case R1 will be bigger than R2. And actually it is distributed according to distance for example if you take so let us call this a b and c if i take some of all the moments about c 
you will immediately get and this is important r1 equals f b over a plus b that's all r2 equal to f a over a plus b so if i want to find this force i take this distance multiply it by this divide by length if i want to find this force if i want to find this force i multiply by this length divide by l that's all there's nothing more to it so this reaction forces are very easy so in this particular case i'm going to do this so that you can see so i'm going to kind of blow it up a little bit there so f is 3000 newtons a is 30 mm b is 70 mm so r1 will be equal to if you look in the formula bar it will tell you it is f times b divided by a plus b oops f57 There you go. That's it. And the other one. Oops. Sorry. You can do the other one even easier. You don't have to necessarily actually do uh, the other calculation. R two will be. You can do this very easily. F equals this minus that. Nine. That's it. So in fact, the ratio of R one to R two is seven is to three. Can you see that? Seven is to three is R one is to R two. You can see that. Seven is to three. If I take the ratio of this, so let me write it down. It is important, you know, enough. And if you remember that, you can do the whole thing. So R one is to R two equal to B is to A, which is seven is to three. If you remember that, you can easily calculate uh, because the other one is the uh, uh, is the remainder. Okay, so you got that idea, right? But you are thinking, you know what? What's the big deal? I really want bending moment. Bending moment is once you get R one and R two, there is nothing to the bending moment. I will show you in a second. Okay. So we calculated the shear force. I mean, we calculated this. What about the bending moment? So you can now draw the shear force diagram for this. SFD will look like this. Here's the beam. So R1 is up. It's like that, like that, like that. in our case 2100 yeah so that's correct so this is up like that this is 2100 you don't have to draw this this is just for us to see from here to here this height is the load 3000 and then this one is up again 900